Hey guys, Kevin Estella with Fieldcraft Survival. And in this video installment for Eastman's Hunting Journal, I wanna talk about something that is commonly referred to as the kill kit. But I don't wanna talk about it in terms of big game hunting. I kinda of wanna look at it as like a broad overview and speak to it in regards to the concept of say like the modern hunter gatherer, someone who's using maybe like a 22 and an ultralight spinning rod or fly reel and uh, rod setup to live off the land. Now, typically when we talk about a kill kit, we always work from success backwards. When I think of whitetail hunting, I'm from the, the east, you know, I always have to think about how am I going to drag this deer back to my vehicle? And that usually means incorporating some type of one inch webbing or quarter inch webbing or half inch webbing and a flashlight that I can wrap it around the deer's antlers head and I can actually drag that deer out of there. When it comes to fishing, I never leave home without a stringer and you can make a very effective stringer, a very low cost and very lightweight stringer just from a backpacking tent peg, a little bit of accessory cord and a split ring. And so whenever I go into the field and I think from success backwards, I think of what happens when I catch that fish, how can I hold on to it, keep it alive until I'm ready to fillet it or gut it and fillet it. So I always think, what do I need? Stringer drag rope. Maybe even if you are a big game hunter, you're using some type of game bags like these from our good friends over at Kafaru. Another thing that you might want to think about when it comes to your kill kit is what in addition to the knife, which we'll get to in a second, might you want to carry that will make your life a little bit easier. Small game hunting, there are a lot of times when you're cutting around the joint as opposed to cutting through the bone, but sometimes it just makes it easier to just snip things with a good pair of lightweight garden shears. I've used these for pheasant hunting, I don't know how many times, and they've processed a lot of game. Inexpensive, lightweight, and it will save the edge of your knife. So a good lightweight pair of shears goes a long way. Another thing that you might wanna consider, and this is kind of controversial, but we'll talk about both sides of it, are using field dressing gloves. Now. Some guys will tell you, you should never use gloves, get your hands dirty, get your knife dirty, and I get it, and I've done it with and without gloves, but I also know that I don't like doing my laundry. I don't like having to scrub blood out of my clothing if I don't have to, and I also know that if I'm gonna spend extended days in the field, I don't wanna have that scent of blood on me as I'm waiting to get picked up or whatever it may be. So I don't mind bringing field dressing gloves, the big gauntlets that come all the way up to my shoulders and then latex gloves that go over my hands. I don't mind doing that because it does make my cleanup very, very simple. If you guys aren't cool with getting kind of ribbed by your buddies for wearing gloves, then don't bring them, but just be prepared to do some laundry. All right, so now the moment of truth. This is what everyone always wants to know. What about the knives? Well, there are a lot of different knife choices out there. You can go with exchangeable, Havilon style blades, which use basically a scalpel. Just realize that it's not a true dedicated fixed blade knife, it's a folder. And there are plenty of people every single year that when they're working on the inside of an animal, they lose the blade, the blade breaks off and they cut their fingers. So make sure that you bring a boo-boo kit as part of your kill kit because you never know if you're accidentally gonna cut yourself. And especially if you're working on an animal with cold hands, you don't want your hands to lose the dexterity or the sensitivity and end up cutting yourself. That would probably be bad. Another thing, you may wanna bring inexpensive knives that are very, very easy to sharpen. Now these two knives from Victorinox, the stiff boning knife and this butcher knife right here, I can't tell you how many animals I've processed, but the trade-off is, even though they're very large and comfortable in hand, they're bulky in the pack. So I can sharpen these up pretty quickly. They do lose their edge a little bit faster than knives that have stronger steel, but they do feel pretty good in the hand, even with field dressing gloves on. I know that I can clean these knives up. If I happen to lose one or break one, they're very inexpensive. Other options along the way could include smaller knives that look very similar. You'd be amazed at how many animals you can clean with just a small knife. Everyone wants the big, cool, sexy knife, but a little knife like this is what you need for caping out animals. Something like this, you can do a deer with, you can do fish with, you can do all sorts of things with just these two little knives. But you are gonna pay for them because they are slightly more expensive. These are from Bark River Knife and Tool. Now, you may find that you're gonna carry 
a dedicated knife like this one and only one knife. And you can do pretty much everything with a single knife. This is the uh, Blackfoot from Montana Knife Company, Josh Smith. I haven't had a chance to clean too many small game with this, but in a couple weeks I'll be going with one of our uh, other employees here at Fieldcraft and hopefully this will see its fair share of white tail. One thing I'm gonna recommend if you carry only one knife, please reconsider that. You may lose that knife and if you do only carry one knife, here is what I want to get to. Carry something that will let you sharpen that knife because you'll find that as you're working through hide, as you're working through fat, you might be working on warthogs or something, wild boar that have dirt and grime built into their fat, ground into their fat, and it's gonna destroy your edge. One of the benefits of carrying multiple knives is you can use one while your buddy's sharpening one and you can do a trade-off. Not a bad idea. The last thing I'm gonna say for your kill kit, Consider the time of day that you may be processing that animal and how long it might take you. Not a bad idea to carry some type of flashlight. Not a bad idea to carry some type of headlamp. Now, as much as I love a good strong flashlight like this, a headlamp might be more practical. Always look at your flashlight and see if it has the capability to do this. So I can have a handheld flashlight and I can also have a head mounted flashlight as long as the clip is oriented correctly. All right guys, that's the kill kit. Plan from success backwards. Think about every single stage from taking that animal as soon as you catch it, shoot it, you, you land it, and work from there. One last thing to remember, you don't want to leave with a bad experience. So take your time planning. And when you think that you have your plan all squared away, Consult your hunting buddies. See if there's something that you forgot in your excitement to get out into the field. Personally, I know I'm gonna be going out in a couple weeks and I'm probably gonna forget something if I don't ask the folks that I'm going with. So don't do this alone. Maybe some of these ideas will encourage you to bring something that you might have forgotten about already, but talk to your hunting buddies because when it comes to processing game and bringing it back from the field, it's good to have more than one head in the game. All right, guys, I'm Kevin Estella with Fieldcraft Survival. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.